I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in was actually called uh, Rondo Avenue. It was called Rondo Community. Uh, and it was a, back in the early uh, 1900s, it was a community filled of all uh, black businesses, um, all black owned houses. Um, and so my family, I would say my grandfather uh, grew up on the street that we lived on. And actually my mother, uh, spent 50 years of her life on that same block. Um, the house that I grew up in, she lived in uh, four houses down the street. And so her whole life um, up until they just moved recently was spent on uh, on that block. It was fu uh, Fuller Block. Uh, for me, um, I was home. Um, when I went to my recruiting, recruiting visits on other campuses, um, it wasn't the same feeling that I felt uh, here. Um, I can remember coming on my my recruiting visit 2006. Uh, it was a night game. It was against Ohio State. Um, we ended up losing the game, but just the environment, just the electricity in the air, uh, just, you know, what football means in the state of Iowa, because there are no pro teams here. Um, it's something that I wanted to be a part of. Um, I know for me, it was important to have my uh, my family come down and, and see me play. So I think distance definitely played a factor. But again, um, ever since the first time that I stepped on campus, um, Iowa seemed to be home to me. I, uh, you know, I met my my uh, my wife. You know, we we've been dating since I was 19 years old. We've been together. Uh, now we are raising two kids here. Um, and so again, just just having that that feeling that this is a place that I could definitely raise my family and, and uh, still, you know, show my kids what the facility looks like and, and, and show them what the Iowa football uh, program is about and what it taught me as a man and um, all those things. So. 33 football games uh, have been postponed or canceled in college football uh, due to the COVID. And we're delighted to say that there will be football here this afternoon in West Lafayette. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Purdue. Gary Dolphin with former Hawkeye great Ed Podolak, whom we'll hear from in just a minute. Let's capitalize on those hustle, working hard. It gets done. Everybody just doing their job, all right? Everybody doing their job, best they can, busting your ass. That's how execution comes. That's how good plays come. So that's what we're focused on at all times. We always respect our opponent, always respect what it takes to win, respect the opportunity. You've prepared well. It's been a good week. All right, so now it's just a matter of going out and playing. We will have the swarm. That's been asked how the guy's going to hold hands and do the swarm in the age of COVID. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Second down and goal. O'Connell looks to the wide side, fires, and caught for a touchdown by David Bell. Again, late coverage getting there by Dane Beltonetti. Third down, and a long five for the Hawks if this drive is to continue. They need at least six. Here's a lob to the sideline, caught, and running is Tyler Goodson. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20 yard line of Purdue. The Hawks are in the red zone. The Hawkeyes had three receivers in a V formation on the wide side of the field, and they just brought Goodson out of the backfield. Linebacker had to cover him. Now that was a lot of touch on that pass. Big hole up the middle. Goodson trying to get that first down. Fumbles the football, and it's picked up by Purdue. Turnover, Iowa, and it appears that Purdue has it. Oh, my. He's just fighting for that extra yard, which would have been the first down. He just kept fighting and kept fighting. Third down and seven. Big play for the Hawkeye defense, and down goes the quarterback at the two-yard line. A sack by, I believe, at Barrington Wade, the linebacker on the other side his feet and hips turning and got through the would-be blocker. See if the Hawks can take advantage of it. Big hole again up the middle. They are gouging.
watching in the middle of that Purdue front. Play fake on second and short. Petras fires a bullet, caught at the 10, and out of bounds goes Sam Laporta, the tight end. He's been the money man, the go-to guy for the Hawks in critical situations. Third and goal. Hawks looking to be going with a quick snap. Petras straight ahead, quarterback sneak. Do they push him into the end zone? They do. That's a touchdown, Iowa. Good to say that for the first time yeah. this year. Touchdown, Spencer Petras, and the Hawks are a point away from tying the game. Lindholm and his two sidekicks on the two guard spots just burrowed everybody into the end zone. for three is Purdue on third down. Here's O'Connell. He's rushed. He runs and throws a pass. It's complete and then knocked loose. They're going to call it incomplete. Well, a vicious hit. hit. Vicious hit. Iowa has gone back to its starting offensive line. Big hole running for a first down and then some is Ivory Kelly Martin. Good protection. Petrus back to pass. Comes to the underneath end. And wide open is Tyrone Tracy. The Indiana native gets another first down. Third and goal. Short pass play of six yards. Regini goes in motion. They're going to run the other way with Sargent. Cut back. Touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. Mackay Sargent. How good has he gotten over his two years here at recognizing when to cut back? Yeah, and he's so strong, and that was so great. He strung it out. That was that right side lead play with the fullback leading him, and he just set up that block and cut right back into the end zone. Play fake. He's going to throw again outside to Bell. He's got the touchdown. Walks in for the score. And Purdue answers the Iowa touchdown with one of its own. And Purdue back up at the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Pass over the middle and intercepted. Intercepted, picked off at the 35-yard line by Matt Hankins. Oh, that, today. Was, that was big by Hankins. Well, it looked like two guys in the same area. Yeah. That was just a wrong pattern. But Matt Hankins yep. almost got a sack on first down, gets a pick on third down. And the Hawks see how aggressive they get. Iowa has two timeouts left. Yeah. Yeah. All day. All day. Back to pass Spencer. Petrus throws it down the seam. Caught by Regini at the 28 yard line. A great throw and an even better catch by Regini. You have to be able to have some real courage to go up and get that pass. Here's Petrus to throw caught inside the 10. And he's feeding the ball to Laporta this time. Here's the snap. It's perfect. The ball is down. Duncan's kick is right through. And the Hawks will go to the locker room with a 17-14 halftime lead the end of the first here at Purdue. The Heartland is brought to you by Hy-Vee, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Hy-Vee proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Seventeen fourteen Iowa as we get set to go to the second half. We'll send a wide out motion. Here's the uh, handoff and to the outside is Horvath and he's loose. Hurdles an Iowa defender and gets all the way down to the 13 yard line. Handoff he ran straight to the outside, far side toward the Iowa bench, turned it upfield and almost turned it into a touchdown. Second down, they get a first down just inside the two. Here's O'Connell to throw, plenty of time. Crossing route is intercepted, in and out of the hands of the tight end, and intercepted by the Hawkeyes. And it looks like Barrington Wade. Barrington Wade comes up with a pick, as it was thrown a little bit behind Payne Durham, the tight end, as he ran right to left across the field at about the five. Connell took a look into the end zone, went to the short man, the underneath man, and threw it behind him, and it was in and out of his hands, and Barrington Wade was standing in the right spot at the two, returned it to the 19, it's Iowa football. Eagles support! <laughs> Iowa's first possession of the second half, leading 17-14 over the Boilermakers. Here's Goodson over right guard. He's got room. First down up near midfield to the 47-yard line of the Hawkeyes. Great block off the right side. You know
know Lindebaum was involved, but so was Cole Banward. And that spin move in about seven yards down the field got him another five yards. The Hawks get a stop. They had him first and 20. Horvath goes in motion. Backfield is empty. And O'Connell to throw again. Rolls out right, looking downfield. Nowhere to go. Now he's hemmed in and slammed to the ground back at the 15. Outstanding coverage downfield yeah. by the Hawkeye secondary. Definitely a coverage sack. Noah Shannon got there first, I think, but that's definitely a coverage sack. Second down, a long three. Good job, Makai. Ball near midfield. He's just going to give it to him again off the right edge. Gets the corner turn. Great blocking. First down. Purdue 40 yard line and out of bounds there as the Hawkeyes move the chains on the ground. They continue to gobble up yardage. Amir Smith Marset goes in motion. Here's the snapback. Spencer throws to a wide open man at the 25. First down. And Rickini carries two defenders with him to the 15 yard line. It's a 33 yard field goal attempt for Keith. He's one for one on the day. He set a Big Ten record with 29 of a blast. Here's the kick. It's right through. Automatic Duncan. Iowa 20, Purdue 14. First down as Purdue approaches midfield. O'Connell on a play fake back. That's pass. holding. Steps up in the pocket. Has a man. First down again in Iowa territory. Milton Wright on the receiving end. So it's a 30-yard field goal try. Here's the snap, the spot, and the kick. Plenty of length, and it's good. 20 to 17. The Hawkeye lead chopped back to three with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. Petrus backs away from center. Now they're going to run Sargent to the short side. Hops through a hole. 45 still going. First down. Midfield. 45-yard line of Purdue. Three or four great moves in the travel path of Makai Sargent. That was beautiful to watch right in front of us. Petrus mixing it up. See what happens here out of a tight eye. Sargent heads to the far side of the field. Huge block by Lindebaum. He's got the first down. Oh, ball's out. Inside the 30. <laughs> There's a pile up for the football, and let's see if Sargent gave it up. Oh, the Hawks have fumbled after two long drives. Purdue says they have the football, and they do. Purdue jarred it loose from Sargent after he gained the first down, ran for 12, and as he was going to the ground, the ball pops out. Oh. backfield and O'Connell straight back to pass rifles it to a wide open receiver touchdown Purdue and the Boilermakers have the lead and guess who no. David Bell and here we go fourth and ten Spencer throws downfield and incomplete they that'll blitzed do it him. they blitzed him he had no chance and the Hawkeyes are 0-1 to start this abbreviated Big Ten season. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. Three wide outs to the wide side of the field. One to the top of the field. The short side. Foles back to pass. Picked off. Intercepted. It's going to go for a touchdown. Frederick Bins. Iowa ties the game with 8-12 to go. I don't think Foles ever saw him. Um, and so typically what we were taught is that if, if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. One thing that I was uh, known for, at least in the, the Iowa circles, uh, was for batted balls. So I just tried to disengage with the offensive lineman and uh, get my hands up. And uh, I believe they were running slants behind me, and so he threw it right over me. I caught it, and honestly, man, it, it, it happened so fast. I feel like I blinked, um, and I was pointing, and then I was in the end zone, and we were celebrating. We're probably going to take about 15 minutes for you all to get acquainted with your mentors or mentor, uh, and then we'll bring them back to the big group um, and we will continue on with the program. Uh, so I've always um, thought about diversity, equity, and inclusion within my own life. Um, again, um, making sure that our student athletes have a voice and, and making sure that their voice is heard. Um, it's something that as, as a player development guy for football, it's always my job 
to ensure that our student athletes are uh, being taken care of when it comes to academic life, social life, uh, making sure that they graduate on time and finish the race, obviously. Um, so uh, in this role, I can liken it that, you know, it's my job to make sure that uh, we are e equitable uh, and giving our student athletes everything they need, all the tools that they need to navigate uh, any DEI space that they have. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. I wasn't going to go, go go around him, so I, I just decided to go straight, straight through him. Uh, knocked him back, saw the quarterback, reached, reached out, grabbed him. Got it. Um, QB sneak, you know, uh, carrying on the uh, the Nate Stanley tradition a little bit. Um, definitely was was nice to get in the end zone. Uh, the receiver had a nice move on me and got me to got me to overplay him. Quarterback threw the ball and I was able to flip my hips and jump back inside for the pick. If I would have played it the correct way, uh, the quarterback probably wouldn't have thrown it, and that play never would have been made. A lot of the time we were just kind of. Going through the motions, we got to come out and just have more guys ready to go and just talk more. Really, communication is the key to any success story. You know, the bright spot of the game is we showed a lot of potential offensively. We just have to play cleaner, play better, um, which is, you know, all of our mistakes are very fixable. Got to do our best to execute, have a great week of practice, and, and go out there and play. Hi, Hawkeye fans. We can't be with you at the game this year. But let's work on being together again soon. Remember the three W's. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Watch your distance. Do your part so we can see you next year. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. This land is cultivated by a legacy of commitment and sacrifice. It is sustained by those who come from a lineage that has provided for the needs of many, persevering through countless hours of contest and strife. Like football season, the harvest season is a special time. Enduring long days, hard work, and often challenges in the days ahead. We encourage all Iowans to be mindful of farmers on the roadways. Give them space and show your support. We're proud to dedicate the Hawkeye football game against Northwestern on October 31st as the fifth annual Harvest Game, paying tribute to our farmers and wishing them a safe and bountiful harvest. We know that under sun and moon, blue skies or rain, our farmers are committed to their craft and passing it on to the next generation. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.